Hi friends, hello and welcome to another video. Today, we are going to look beyond what some perceive as Senator Tom Cotton's racist comments during the recent US Senate hearing with the TikTok CEO, Mr. Chu. However, we will focus on the four main concerns that America has regarding the social media giant TikTok. By the end of this video, I hope that you will be able to understand why America truly wants an app like Douyin in China and why they cannot have it. So stay tuned for that. We all witnessed Senator Tom Cotton, the Republican from Arkansas, uh, who's seen here posing with some stolen gold from Iraq, repeatedly questioning the Singaporean CEO of TikTok, Mr. Chu, about his ties to the Communist Party of China, despite Mr. Chu repeatedly clarifying that he's Singaporean. Of what nation are you a citizen? Singapore. Sir. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Senator, I'm Singaporean. No. Considering that Cotton has been to Singapore in the past, he surely knows that it's not part of China and that has no connection to the Communist Party of China. So perhaps he's just acting uninformed. But let us move on to the serious part of this video. There was also a point of moment when Senator Haley invited Meta CEO, Mr. Zuckerberg, to apologize to the families of the victims of sexual abuse facilitated by his app, which Zuckerberg surprisingly did. Now, this moment will be significant later when we discuss how impotent the American government and American citizens really are when it comes to reining in corporations that cause substantial harm to society. Now, the first concern that was brought up at the hearing was national security and data privacy. There are fears that this app, TikTok, could potentially be used by the Chinese government to collect sensitive information about U.S. citizens. Now, while this is a valid concern, it's important to remember that TikTok servers are under U.S. jurisdiction. It means that any breach to the servers would require hacking. And this is a risk that applies to any server in the U.S., social media or power grid, whatever. Senators worry about TikTok's data privacy protections for users, and rightly so. But the argument is that these senators are really not the ones who should be leading the charge, in my opinion. Watch here. Mr. Chu, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? Terrible. Now, in response to this, Mr. Chu reminded them that TikTok has invested $1.5 billion to protect user data on U.S. soil, and it ensures that it cannot be accessed from Beijing. It even allows for U.S. government audits to their company. Additionally, the Senate is concerned about TikTok being used as a tool for foreign influence campaigns, given that China is expanding its global influence. Now, in answer to these allegations, we to be honest, they lack any kind of proof. Mr. Chu stated that TikTok has never engaged in controlling narratives on behalf of the Communist Party of China. Now, between you and me, it's important not to forget a critical lesson from the Salem witch trials. The burden of proof lies with the accuser. Where is the proof? None has been shown. However, the impact of TikTok on societal harmony and values truly depends on the content that users create and engage with, which in some way, reflects the values of the American society. To me, this suggests, once again, that America is avoiding taking responsibility for its own behavior. But before moving on past this Witches of Salem reference, I would like you to imagine for a moment if Elon Musk, the Tesla CEO, were summoned to China's National People's Congress and asked about Tiananmen Square, knowing that his answers would determine the future of his company in the country, just as this proposed ban on TikTok actually hangs above Mr. Chu's head. What do you think the headlines would be in the West if that were the case? Let me know in the comment section down below because that's exactly what happened to Mr. Chu. While the bite-sized format of short videos and uh, the very superficial content on TikTok has the potential to erode values in society, the same can be said for China's Douyin. Both platforms actually promote viral trends and, and funny videos that can sometimes eclipse more substantial content. However, the algorithm on Douyin here in China operates under parental controls that prioritize content exposing positive values and critical thinking. Why is it that the U.S. cannot request the same safeguards for content push to children 
in America. Why is it? This failure lies squarely with the American government. Consider that like in the U.S., China is home to a diverse content creators on the platform who share educational, inspiring, and uplifting content. Many of them have discovered a sense of belonging and, and support on these apps, utilizing them to raise awareness for significant causes, to showcase their unique voices and their unique talents. The thing is that China filters out undesirable content, while America doesn't. Consequently, there is a stark contrast in the content that is allowed in Douyin and TikTok in America. This includes, for example, political content. Critics allege that dissenting opinions are banned on Chinese social media. Nothing could be further from the truth. And I can tell you from personal experience that even positive or supportive content is not allowed. Despite my positive stance on China, which I regularly express here on YouTube or X, my political content gets removed from Chinese media platforms. Why? If this is not about propaganda and trying to push information to the masses that is just positive, why do they do it? China is intent on maintaining cohesive messaging and societal harmony. The authorities know the divisive potential of social media, and they are very well aware of the risks that are involved. They don't know who I am or the nature of my content. They don't know uh, what I say. They don't have the resources to vet each and every word that I express in English. Therefore, they just maintain a firm rule. No political content on social media from unauthorized accounts. That's it. Simple. Now, while you might be wondering whether this is good or bad, beneficial or not, consider for a second the state of polarization in your country, America, today. You guys are more divided than ever, and this partisan circus only serves as a distraction from real problems. Social media It's used to exacerbate this division to the detriment of your country. You could and you should implement some degree of censorship. In fact, you've already experienced centralized information control a little bit. Recall that at one point, probably too late into the pandemic, Trump designated the office of Mike Pence as the sole source of data regarding COVID-19 infections, mirroring in some way what China does. The thing is that contradictory information on such crucial matters does no good for the people. What about LGBTQ content? Douyin in China has a strict rules against promoting LGBTQ plus issues, especially to minors. Here's an important thing to remember. People can be LGBTQ in China. It just cannot be promoted, especially not on social media and especially not to children. And I know that half of America watching this video wishes that this were the same in their country to some extent. Just go to any school hearing. What about religious content? Douyin exercises a strict censorship over religious material, particularly concerning groups that are not officially recognized by the Chinese government. Fact is that religion, a potent man-made construct, has historically manipulated people and as such, Religions require safeguards to protect individuals. This is probably another aspect of the Chinese government that victims of the prosperity gospel of the healing by faith in America might come to appreciate one day. What about the news and current events? Well, Douyin in China applies stringent censorship to news and current events to control the potential damaging effects of disinformation. Some Americans might have appreciated censorship of the baseless Trump PP tape, for example, in 2016, while others might wish the Hunter Biden laptop story had been kept out of the electoral discussion. Here's the thing. If you're frowning at either example I just gave you, that simply illustrates the impact of the divisive misinformation circus that you are subject to. Perhaps it is time to recognize the benefits of some controls like the ones that Chinese impose on their internet. Implementing measures like this is not authoritarian. It's essential for protecting your children and protecting the nation at large. Mark Zuckerberg apologizing to the families of victims of sex abuse facilitated by his app is too little, too late. I hope you agree with me. So Mr. Chu, under penalty of perjury, tells the senators what TikTok is accused of is not happening. Senators don't believe him. What next? How do you guys fix this? You should demand direct oversight of social media companies by the government. 
Witnessing this particular exchange here is truly disheartening. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, you and the companies before us, I know you don't mean it to be so, but you have blood on your hands. Nothing here. There's not a damn thing anybody can do about it. You can't be sued. So the bottom line is you can't be sued. You should be. And these emails would be great for punitive damages. But the courtroom's closed to every American abused by all the companies in front of me. If senators truly wanted to protect people's data and lives, they should take a page from China's playbook. Those in the know are very well aware that Google, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and many others are not banned in China, nor are they banned in several other countries. These companies simply choose not to operate in these countries due to disagreements with local regulations. Consider Facebook, for example. It doesn't operate in Iran, North Korea, Myanmar, Russia, Turkmenistan, and Uganda. Take Twitter or X, for example. It doesn't operate in Russia, Iran, or Turkey, a U.S. ally and a NATO member, by the way. Consider that America has even experimented with this approach of censorship. X was temporarily banning the U.S., the U.K., and Saudi Arabia in 2023 due to concerns over the spread of misinformation and fake news. So it is possible. So why is it that you can't, the people of America, you can't take control over this dangerous and powerful tool? Now, in conclusion, I want to leave you with a thought-provoking question that I saw somewhere on, on X. If companies like X, Twitter, Facebook, at some point agreed to meet Chinese requirements and enter this vast market, what do you think would happen? Better yet, why don't they do it? It's something that could yield billions of dollars in revenue for them. So why do they leave that money on the table? They could operate like Bytance, one app for China, one app for America. So why not do it? Simply put, it would be a massive blow to the U.S. anti-China narrative that they cannot proclaim anymore that such and such and such app are bad in China. China bad. Think about it. That's all, to, that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much. And until I see you again, take it easy. Remember, if you want to support the work that I do, make sure to hit the link in the description down below to buy me a cup of coffee. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.